Now, the developing over yesterday was one of those stories that just makes you hold your breath. The sight of a cable car in Pakistan hanging at a sickening angle, stuck hundreds of feet above the ground. After what must have been a terrifying 15 hours, all six children and two adults were rescued. We can find out now more about the rescue and its risk from Ash Alexander Cooper. He's a former combat helicopter pilot. Ash, very good morning to you. Um, the first child was, was rescued by helicopter yesterday. Just an, an extraordinary mission. Explain sort of some of the dangers and the risks at play in, in trying to attempt something like that. Well, clearly this was a risky situation with just the fact that the cable car was hanging by one cable or rope uh, that was left. So there was a lot of concern that that, how long that would last. Um, Just finding enough or the right kind of pilots who can do winching operations would have been a challenge as well. Hence, probably the part, partly due to the length of time it took to get helicopters to the scene. Um, But one of the biggest challenges is that this area where they were operating is both summer in Pakistan and it's, it's high. And helicopters don't perform well when it's hot and high. You lose power. And therefore, if things if things go wrong, they can unravel very, very quickly. And the helicopter pilot would have you know, very, very little leeway to, to correct any errors um, in, in those kind of environments. So then add a winch and somebody dangling in high winds. Um, and it was extremely dangerous and, and clearly very unpredictable what could happen and, and terrifying for the passengers as well as the, the crew. So can you explain the operation that they did actually go through, which was successful in rescuing these children? Yeah, so the the first rescue of of one of the children by by helicopter was was somebody being winched down from a military helicopter, uh, where they they uh, gave them water, food, and some medicines, I believe, because somebody had already collapsed, and they were able to put a harness around one of the children to extract them. But but that was clearly very dangerous. Uh, they I think they managed to get one more uh, possibly out by by winch before um, they decided it was just too windy and too dangerous. The risk of the cable getting wrapped around the cable car and, and you know, clearly uh, with catastrophic results potentially um, going to happen. They then moved to a, a more ground based solution once once darkness fell, which saw somebody being moved down, effectively pulling themselves along the remaining cable down to the car and then extracting the kids one or two at a time, um, effectively by pulling themselves up up the rope on a, a kind of a dolly cart. As a sort of a combat helicopter pilot, are you trained to rescue people in scenarios as extreme as this? Not every helicopter pilot will be trained in winching operations because these are very technical and, and pretty dangerous. Um, and not all helicopter pilots also are trained in mountain flying. So there are many factors that would have probably limited the pool of people that could have been effectively used uh, in this rescue, which, as I said, may, may have taken uh, maybe why it took quite a lot of time before the first helicopters arrived on scene. Um, I think compounded probably with, because uh, I've spent some time in that part of the world, many officials at different level, levels of local and national will have probably been having their say, which may have may have caused other delays. Um, but technically, if, if you can do the winching operations, uh, the more windy it is, then the, the, the risk goes up and the danger increases exponentially. And when would you normally be using sort of techniques like that? Uh, well, you've probably seen, you know, shows like Deadliest Catch and, and the like, you know, where Coast Guard and uh, a search and rescue use these techniques all the time to winch people off vessels, sinking vessels or uh, off remote mountain sides, etc. So these are things that are pretty common. But if it's not a part of your day job, as it were, then then these skills are perishable. And, and if you're not current in your training, then that also adds to the risk. Compounded knowing that the world is watching, I'm sure these pilots had... Um, you know, were extremely stressed and uh, and worried about um, how it would end up with with the eyes of the world on them too. The, there was significant time pressure as well, wasn't there, for the helicopter operation? Because once it got dark, it then was inappropriate to use that as a method. Well, yes and no. I mean, ironically, at night the wind would probably have dropped. But if these pilots were not trained in night vision, um, so op- or night operations using night vision, then they that would have been out of out of play for them. Whereas, you know, our, I and many of my colleagues. Have been trained to to fly equally as well at night as in the daytime. So unfortunately for them, it would appear that you know, night meant that the helicopter operations ceased. But in in the end, it seemed that the the most effective way to get people out was actually from the ground. Mm. How common is it that you end up in a situation like this and you want multiple different sort of rescue attempts happening at the same time? Well, you'd want to have many different scenarios uh, or contingencies up your sleeve. Uh, but command and control would have been probably the most important thing. You know, have a clear line of command so whoever was running the overall operation would be being presented both 
you know, doc doctors would have been talking about the medical issues, environmental folks have been saying about the, the issues of dehydration and, um, and the cold and those other things, as well as the pilots themselves and the military who may be coming up with ways in which they thought might be able to extract the children. All of those things would have been considered, but clear chain of command and clear communication would have been key. Uh, and it did appear early on that this might have taken a bit more time than, than perhaps they would have liked. Thank you so much for just providing a bit of insight into how these operations uh, take place and the training involved. Ash Alexander-Cooper, a former specialist military unit commander and combat helicopter pilot. Those uh, children and their teachers all rescued yesterday, having been stuck uh, 900 feet over a ravine. Just uh, quite incredible. And the pictures are absolutely amazing. If you do subscribe uh, to The Times, make sure you have a look on the app or in the paper. Um, you can't help but... It looks like... Honestly, it looks like something from a from a film, doesn't it? It looks like something from a Bond Mission movie. Impossible. It was ridiculous. Yeah. yeah, and you think it's if you've got any degree of vertigo, it is basically your nightmare. The cable car hanging almost upside down by what a th what looks like a thread above a gorge with people sort of staring at you helplessly. It is an ama it is an amazing thing that everyone got off off safely. But do look at the pictures um, because your stomach will lurch uh, for a moment uh, when you do. Uh, don't go anywhere after nine.